Baron Collier trying to make it all the way to the top. And I couldn't eat too much turkey today. Don't want to get filled up before you <laughs> had a big down. game tomorrow night. This is as big as they come when you're in the playoffs. And while you guys were figuring out a way to work off that dinner, the Baron Collier Cougars have been figuring out a way to win their first state playoff game ever. Tomorrow night on the road against Bradenton Southeast. The Cougars went 10-0, the first perfect season in school history, won the district for the first time. Now, these guys haven't played in a couple weeks, while Southeast didn't clinch its district till last Friday night. That gave Collier an extra week to get ready, but they'll use the time to polish their act, not change things too much. Two weeks prepare for Southeast, that'll help. We're not going to change a lot of things we do. I mean, we're going to uh, adjust some blocking assignments and maybe put in a new wrinkle or two, but as far as our basic offense and basic defense, we're going to go with what got us here, and, and that's playing pretty sound football. Well, here's one thing the Cougars definitely aren't going to change. Number 18, touchdown Terry Dean, the top quarterback in Southwest Florida, threw for 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns this season. He's going to be a key man tomorrow night. Meantime, up in Bradenton, the Southeast Seminoles are preparing for the Cougars. Southeast won District 11 with a 6-4 and four record that was kind of misleading. The Knolls had to forfeit two games, but won their last five on the field to repeat as district champs. They think they've got not only the home field advantage, but the edge in playoff experience. That's going to be a benefit to us in the playoffs because of the fact, at least in the first playoff game, because Naples Baron Collier has never been here. We get to play it at home, and I think there's a good feeling amongst the kids. Not a lot of rah-rah type of excitement, yet just a more business like the attitude, let's go out and play football and get the job done. And the Cougars and Seminoles tangle at 7.30 tomorrow night up in Bradenton. If you can't go, don't worry, keep it here. We'll have the whole story of the game for you tomorrow night at 11. Well, you know, football in Dallas is a Thanksgiving tradition, but traditions about all the Cowboys have left these days. Today they suffered their worst Turkey Day loss ever, worse than any beating they ever took when Tom Landry was on the sidelines of Texas Stadium. This one between the Cowboys and Eagles was not pretty. Here, Brett Hager of the Eagles and Troy Aikman get into it. There were more takedowns in this game than in a Saturday night wrestling contest. Well, Randall Cunningham landed the big knockout punches. He hit Chris Carter with two touchdowns. Carter made two great catches. Watch this one. One-handed. He gets both feet down. The Eagles stuffed the Cowboys 27-0. Now let's go to Motown, where the Lions snapped a three-game Thanksgiving losing streak thanks to this man, number 20, Barry Sanders. Here he goes 45 yards on a screen pass down to the Browns' nine-yard line, but he fumbled on the next play, and Cleveland recovered. It was 3-3 in the second when Bob Galliano hit Richard Johnson for 27 yards, six points, and a 10-3 Lion lead. Then with time running out in the first half, Barry Redden, remember this guy? Barry Redden goes 38 yards on the draw and down the sideline for the touchdown. It was 10-10 at the half. But this was Barry Sanders' day to shine. He had 145 yards, went over the 1,000-yard mark for the year. That run set up Eddie Murray's 35-yard field goal, and that did it as the Lions beat the Browns 13-10. to uh, I feel good within myself because, I, you know, I had a doubt whether I could compete on this level, you know, and uh, just wasn't sure. But it, it shows me that maybe I can compete, but I, I know that I have a long ways to go and I can get better. Uh, and that comes from a man who won the Heisman as a junior and has over 1,200 or 1,000 yards in just 12 games this year. And if you hadn't had your fill of football, I got one more game to show you. The first Turkey Bowl, the Charlotte High Tarpons against the Sarasota Sailors. The Tarps fell behind 7-zip, but tied it in the first quarter on this 42-yard run by Carlton White on fourth and one. Class 4A Charlotte put up a great fight against 5A Sarasota, but in the end, the Sailors were just too strong. Sarasota's Sean Whitfield bowled over here from the one. Charlotte fell to Sarasota. 31-24 in overtime in the Turkey Bowl. And quickly, I'll just tell you there were only two games in the NHL tonight, and we'll go to the scoreboard, and I'll tell you what happened there. Uh, the Bruins over the Maple Leafs, 6 to nothing, and it was St. Louis 5, Winnipeg 2. The Sun Sox are in this weekend playing St. Pete. They're going to have a big fireworks show after tomorrow night's game at Terry Park, so you might want to get out and see that. Fun. Sounds Should, like it should be fun. fun. A weekend, Miami-Notre Dame this weekend. There's no reason not to watch TV this weekend. All right. Go outside. All right, thank you, Dan. Still to come, you've heard the saying, don't rain in my parade. Yeah.